What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Fellow Show. My name is Kyle. It's February 6th. It's Super Bowl week. Uh, we got a lot to look forward to. Um, as I record this right now, it's about 5 o'clock Central Time. We're going to be looking at the underdog ADP. They finally put out their best ball ADP. So this is just going to be a quick video for you guys, kind of just showing you uh, the tool that I have up on the fantasyfellowship.com. And you guys can check out the underdog ADP and kind of see where people are being drafted in February. And yeah, there's still a lot, you know, we have free agency. We have, um, we have the, the NFL draft. We have so many things that are going to move the needle, but Hey, if you're a sicko and you want to see what's going on, you're in the right place. So uh, we're going to hop into a screen share here, underdog ADP. And if you're not familiar, underdog is half PPR scoring. I updated it this morning and uh, let's just kind of show you guys what's going on here. The top, uh, let's go with the top 12 or so. I'll kind of get that up on the list here. Um, so you have uh, the first one-on-one, it's Christian McCaffrey. You know, they have him projected for just over 300 fantasy points. There's a gap from running back one to running back two. Number two, you have CD Lamb, the number one wide receiver here uh, and it's by a good margin here too so uh, I like CD Lamb I think maybe he's just scratching the surface of what he can do I think CD Lamb uh, is probably set up to be the wide receiver one pretty much for the rest of the offseason and through the summer Tyreek Hill coming in at number three Justin Jefferson number four and Jamar Chase number five so you have this big tier of potential wide receiver ones I don't think it's crazy to see Lamb Tyreek Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase finish as the wide receiver one in fantasy football this year uh, and then we have a break from that tier one of receivers down to Brees Hall. He is the consensus number two running back. There's a gap between Brees Hall. Uh, you know, obviously there's a gap with him and Christian McCaffrey, but there's a gap from Brees Hall to the third best guy. Um, so Brees Hall going to cost a mid first round pick this year. It looks like uh, Amon Ross St. Brown is number seven and Puka Nakua coming in at number eight. Oh my goodness. Are you going to be able to spend a, a mid to late first on Puka Nakua is going to be a huge question going into this year but uh, I, I feel pretty confident in what we saw at the end of the year with Puka and the Rams it looked like Puka took over you know I, I know Cooper Cup's getting up there in age I also don't know if he was 100% healthy you know for most of the season he kind of battled that ankle injury and he, he played well enough but I, I think you could see Puka Nakua was the better receiver especially down the stretch and into the playoffs. So Puka at number eight, there's, then we got a little tier of running backs, Bijan, Jameer Gibbs, and Kieran Williams. These guys are a little bit behind Brees Hall, uh, but they form a really nice tier two, tier three. I think I might group Brees Hall in with these running backs. They're all really young players with a lot of upside here. They have their best ball ahead of them and they all played well in stretches last year. Obviously, Bijan's going to get a new head coach, new offensive coordinator that could unlock him and hopefully get him what he deserves. Jameer Gibbs, we're going to see hopefully more put on his plate and him continue to excel uh, in, in both running and catching the ball. And then Kieran Williams, man, he was he won dynasty championships. He won fantasy football championships last year for people. And I think he's going to pick up where he left off. So you have two Rams in the top 12 here. And two New York Jets, Garrett Wilson, sneaking in here as the number 12 overall player. So there's your top 12. You have seven receivers, five running backs. I'm curious if you guys have any comments on this. Is there anyone that you're not comfortable with here in the top 12? Uh, I think Puka at number eight makes a lot of sense. He's wide receiver six, but man, it's tough. You know, I might, instead of Puka, I might grab one of these running backs, but I think, you know, grabbing an elite receiver this year is going to be very popular. Moving on to the tier two, I guess round two picks number 20, uh, picks 13 through 24. A.J. Brown, last year he cost a late first-round pick. He's wide receiver eight. He was phenomenal the first two months of, of the football year in 2023, but he really struggled down the stretch as well as the Eagles' offense as a, you know, as a whole. But they have A.J. Brown here, first pick of the second round. Jonathan Taylor, and I'm excited about that Colts offense with Anthony Richardson when he comes to play. How well does that uh, work out for Jonathan Taylor? Does he lose touchdowns? Is it just a run-heavy team? Does it just go nuts? I'm excited for JT there. Uh, and then we get a little receivers here. Nico Collins, wide receiver 15. People are ranking him as an alpha top 10 wide receiver in fantasy football right now. Uh, DJ Moore, number 16. And I think a lot of that's going to depend. You know, DJ Moore is going to shift up or down. Whether you know, We have to see what they do with Justin Fields, Caleb Williams. We have to also see if they bring in a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo, Romo Dunze. 
We'll see on DJ Moore. Uh, and then, wow, look at that. Devon Achan coming in at number 17, RB7. So if he stays healthy, uh, that's kind of what people are pricing him out to be. And then we get our first rookie here, Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver 11. You know, pending landing spot that could move him up or down. And then we get to the QB, Josh Allen, the clear QB1. There's no QB2 around him. And then we got some receivers here to finish of the final uh, four or five picks here. Debo Samuel, Rashi Rice, and Brandon Ayuk. I think it's going to be tough picking both 49ers. It's going to be one of their year. I don't know if both guys can can exist together and be a top you know 12 wide receiver. But Debo and Ayuk, you want to be invested in that 49ers offense. And then Rashi Rice, man, he's really, really developed into a really strong receiver. And he looks like the number one receiver going forward for Patrick Mahomes. Big game for him on Sunday, the Super Bowl. We'll see if he can uh, capitalize. Uh, but anyway, Saquon Barkley, 23, RB8. That's pretty cheap for Saquon Barkley, man. If they kind of retool that offense, maybe they bring in a new quarterback, they figure some things out offensively, get healthy. Might be a nice little discount on Saquon Barkley. And then we have Stephon Diggs here coming in at number 24, the last pick of the second round, wide receiver 15. You know, he struggled down the stretch last year, too. I don't know. I think he's entering his age 30 season. He's getting up there in age. So maybe we're pricing in some uh, some age factor here. Moving into the third round, 25 through about 36, you have Devontae Adams, another aging receiver. Don't know who the quarterback is going to be. Uh, but then we get some fun receivers here. Chris Olave, Michael Pittman Jr., and Tank Dell. Can Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, thrive with Anthony Richardson? He was a top 10, top 12 receiver most of last year. He's wide receiver 18 in these rankings. And Olave, man, wide receiver 17. I think he can be a guy that outperforms that ADP. Tank Dell, if he stays healthy, you know, you're looking at Tank Dell and Nico Collins, both in the top 30. So we love CJ Stroud. And then look at that, tight end one, Sam Laporta coming in at number 29. Very high for a tight end. Uh, Travis Etienne at 30, Isaiah Pacheco at 31. Pacheco is a really good running back, man. To get him undrafted. The, the Chiefs struck gold again. Uh, we got a couple of receivers here, some big play guys, DK Metcalf and Mike Evans at 32 and 33. There's Jalen Hurts down here at 34. He's QB2 off the board, about a full round behind Josh Allen. Uh, and then he's got Devonta Smith and Malik Neighbors. So two receivers to finish it here. And that's your second rookie off the board, by the way, if you're paying attention. Moving on to uh, the fourth round here, you have Keenan Allen. Getting up there in age, you know, I don't know if he can continue to do what he does, but man, he was for parts of the year last year, he was the wide receiver one or two. So maybe we get him back healthy and he's a, a steal at the wide receiver 24 ADP. Rashad White, kind of cheap here for a top 10, top 12 running back profile. Jalen Waddle, 20, uh, number 39. There's Lamar Jackson, QB3. James Cook up to RB12 here at 41. There's Cooper Cup, again, getting up there in age. Uh, T Higgins at 43. He's going to be a free agent. Not sure where he's going to play, but we'll see if he goes back to Cincinnati or not. Drake London, a lot of his stock is going to depend on um, who they bring in at quarterback for him. Zay Flowers at 45. Patrick Mahomes, 46. He's the fourth QB off the board. And there's Travis Kelsey for a perennial first round pick for the last, what, five, six, seven years, it feels like. Now he's at 47, tight end two. So the first blip on the radar of the climb. And then Amari Cooper, uh, end of round four, Kenneth Walker and CJ Stroud finished the top 50. So five QBs, 13, uh, 13 running backs, 30 wide receivers, and just two tight ends in the top 50. So it's a little bit of a weird year. Um, but, you know, I went 250 deep with this. I think I'm just going to review the next 100 or so. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, you guys can totally go uh, to the Fantasy Fellowship and click on the underdog ADP. I'm going to put a link in the bio. You guys can find it there, or maybe I'll put it in the comments. But we'll go a little bit quickly now. I'm just going to read what we got going on here. Speaking of reading, you have Jaden Reed, Green Bay's first skill player off the board here, wide receiver 31, pick 51. There's Jordan Addison, year two receiver for the Vikings. Anthony Richardson going off the board as QB6 in the fifth round right now. we got a couple tight ends, Trey McBride and Mark Andrews. I'm seeing uh, really good things out of Trey McBride and dynasty rankings and things like that. So, you know, Trey McBride might be uh, one of the new it things up there with Sam Laporta. Uh, Josh Jacobs at 56. He's entering free agency too. Don't know where he's going to play. There's another rookie, Romo Dunze here, 57th overall wide receiver, 33. Calvin Ridley, don't know if I want to buy Calvin Ridley, but he's wide receiver 34 prices. We'll see about that. Uh, Alvin Kamara, just another year older. He's at RB15. And then end of the sixth, end of the fifth round, you have Jackson Smith and the Jigba, Seattle Seahawks, second year wide receiver coming in at wide receiver 35. That might be a good value there. I think he could beat that ADP. Um, entering the sixth round, Terry McLaurin, uh, wide receiver 36. Derrick Henry, 
RB 16, is he going to be playing for the Titans? I don't know. I think the hot rumors I've seen that he's going to be a Baltimore Raven, but who knows? They tend to throw money at older players. So maybe that uh, there's a little bit of traction there. George Pickens coming in at 63. Don't know if I like that one. Wide receiver 37. George Kittle, tight end five, coming in at 64th. Nick Chubb, we'll see about his uh, recovery. He had that gruesome injury week one or week two. Don't know if he's going to be ready for the start of the year. Aaron Jones, RB18. He looked really good down the stretch, man. He was a reason why the Packers were surging and playing great offensively the way they did. Christian Kirk, not too far behind his counterpart, Calvin Ridley, coming in at wide receiver 38. Another tight end here, Dalton Kincaid. People are projecting him to take another step forward in 2024. And Taji Spears, wow, he's super high. RB19. Uh, this is, I guess, assuming Derrick Henry goes uh, somewhere else and Tajay Spears is kind of the 1A, 1B back for Tennessee. Austin Eckler all the way down at RB20, 70th overall, end of the sixth round, and Ramondre Stevenson and David Montgomery. So you've got some, some nice running back values down here, RB20 through 22, Eckler, Stevenson, and David Montgomery. Moving into the seventh round, you have Dak Prescott, QB7. Tony Pollard, RB23. Man, he was a second-round pick last year. Uh, his value is going down. I think the Cowboys are probably going to add another big back to help him lighten his load and make sure he's fresh for all of his touches. Joe Burrow, QB8. Chris Godwin, wide receiver, 39. I like Chris Godwin's value quite a bit there. Justin Fields at QB9 is interesting, uh, You know, depending on where he plays. Joe Mixon, just another year older. I don't know if I like that. Uh, Brock Bowers, the uh, the first rookie tight end off the board here. Tight end seven. We're having uh, a potential top five rookie tight end here. Brock Bowers, the Georgia tight end. And then another rookie, Brian Thomas, the big-bodied wide receiver, led the NCAA in 17 touchdowns last year. He's fun. We'll see where he lands. Uh, then you got Justin Herbert. A little bit of a discount here on Herbert. QB 10. You know, Keenan Allen's up there in age. Mike Williams gets hurt. Quentin Johnson didn't pan out. I would like to see them add either Malik Neighbors or Brock Bowers to that arsenal. Maybe Herbert gets boosted a little bit there. Christian Watson, don't know what we're doing with the Packers uh, potential wide receiver here. James Conner, just another year older, RB25, and then DeAndre Hopkins. So you have some real question marks here beginning in the seventh round. Uh, and then the final, you know, entering the eighth round here, or I guess this, yeah, this would be the eighth round. Najee Harris, I don't know why I have Pittsburgh Steelers up there, but uh, Evan Ingram, Jordan Love, David Njoku, Raheem Mostert, there's Brian Robinson Jr., Brock Purdy, QB12, Kyler Murray, QB13. I like that discount on Kyler Murray. You know, full healthy season for him, healthy offseason, maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. That could be nice. Jake Ferguson, tight end 10. Javante Williams on a nice little discount here. RB29 for the Denver Broncos, a full year removed from his knee injury. Kyle Pitts, tight end 11, a little bit of a discount. TJ Hawkinson, man. Tight end 12. We'll see if he's ready to go. Uh, DeAndre Swift, Jalen Warren entering the top 100, Cortland Sutton, and Deontay Johnson. So there's your top 100 or so. Uh, again, if you guys want to check out the link, uh, I'll put it in the comments or whatever you guys need. But a lot of fun looking at this stuff. I know it's early, but hey, if you play best ball or if you just like to, to kind of be a, a fantasy degenerate, uh, it's fun to look at and kind of see where things are shaping up. So enjoy the top 250 you know, on the fantasyfellowship.com. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to post a separate rookie video here shortly. So stay tuned for that, but Hey, enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.